Two of the important groups of plants that have flowers are called monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Most of the flowering plants in our fields and gardens are dicotyledons. And what a variety there is in shape, size, color, and flower. Marguerites, white stars with gold centers. Harebells, with lovely small blue petals. Bindweed, with heart-shaped leaves, twining stems, and delicately colored flowers. Thistles, with purple-white flowers and spiky leaves, plants much disliked by farmers. But despite this contrast and variety, all these plants and all other dicotyledons have a number of ways in which they are alike. These likenesses can be seen in how the seeds germinate, in the way the roots grow, in the kind of leaves, and in the structure of the flowers. We'll look at some of these common characteristics, beginning with those of germination, and taking as examples first the bean and then the pea. In these plants, the shoot or plumule grows from the seed bent over with the first two leaves folded up and hanging down. This is a bean cut in half to reveal the growth. First, the root or radical appears and pushes downwards, and then the shoot or plumule grows upwards. Watch it bend over. We'll look at germination again, still above the surface of the soil, but this time with a whole bean. When the bean is set in the ground, all we see is the plumule breaking through the surface of the soil. It appears to be weak, but actually it is very strong. And now, from a different viewpoint, here is the pea germinating. Typical of dicotyledons. The roots, we take the pea and bean as examples, also have ways in which they are alike. There is one primary or taproot which has laterals growing from it. A pea placed in moist soil absorbs water and germinates. The primary root grows. The plumule grows. And now, regularly spaced at intervals on the primary root, the lateral roots appear. They grow out from little slits on the taproot. From these lateral roots, the root hairs grow, and from the soil absorb water and dissolved mineral salts. We see now a typical dicotyledon root system. Above ground to look at the leaves. The common characteristics are a midrib with lateral veins. The leaves of the pea are compound, with paired leaflets near the base, and with terminal leaflets taking the form of tendrils. The bean. This close view shows both midrib continuous with the stem and lateral veins branching out from it. Typical dicotyledon leaves. Notice the angle between one of the leaf stalks and the main stem. This is called the axil. From it grows a bud, which will give rise to a branch which may bear either leaves or flowers. The movement of the topmost shoot is typical of a climbing plant. As the plant grows, this movement increases. It is roughly circular, thus enabling the stem to twine round a support. The lateral veins can be seen even at this early stage. The strong mid-rib which supports the leaf shows here, particularly in the top leaf on the right. Bean, salvia, snapdragon, lupin and pea, whose flower parts are in fives, illustrate likeness, contrast and variety. The bean flower has five petals, a large one or standard behind, two wings at the side, and two petals in front, forming the keel. The keel protects a carpel and ten stamens, 
on which are the pollen-producing anthers. Sepals can be seen near the bottom right of the picture. There are five. The dark markings on the standard petal are the honey guides. The salvia has five petals and five sepals. The two back petals form an upper lip and the three front ones a lower lip. The weight of a bee on the front petals causes stamens to bend over and thus deposit pollen on its back. This pollen will be carried away and may fertilize another flower. In the snapdragon, the petals again form two lips. But the lower lip, consisting of three petals, grows upwards till it touches the hood, which is made of the remaining two. The ways in which bees pollinate snapdragon and salvia are similar. To reach the nectar, the bee has to open the mouth of the flower and in doing so, receives pollen from the anthers. The lupin belongs to the same family as the pea. Inside the flower are ten stamens and an unusual style. This style has a piston-like action which forces pollen out of the stamens when the keel is depressed by the weight of a bee on it. In this way, pollen is deposited on the under surface of the insect. This open flower of the pea is ready for pollination. In structure, it is similar to the bean and lupin. Five sepals and five petals consisting of a standard, two wings and a keel. In this close view, we will remove the near wing to reveal the keel, in which ten stamens and one carpel are compressed. The weight of the bee depresses the keel and the stigma forces its way out. A diagram shows the stigma style ovary and ten stamens. The insect first touches the stigma and then touches the stamens, thus affecting cross-pollination. Most of the cultivated plants of our gardens and the wild flowers of our fields, with all their likeness, contrast and variety, belong to this interesting group the dicotyledons.